Hello and welcome to What's Hot. This is a show where we get into what's new, what's hot and what's trending. I'm Uncle Timothy. And I'm Lovedale. Today we're talking about everything black. Black is king and we're going to get into how black people all around are connecting with Africa through music, arts and lifestyle. Joining us to discuss this is presenter and acne activist Afia Kafour and independent Belgian artist Nayota Izadi. Welcome to the show guys, thank you so much for coming. Thanks Thank for, for having, having us. us. So Beyonce has dropped her visual album, Black is King. I don't know if you guys have watched it, but more than that, so much has been going on in our community. And there's been a lot to talk about, about returning to the motherland. So first of all, what does Black is King mean to you guys? I would say Black is King is what we've all been waiting for. Yeah. It's a time that has been a long time coming. There's been people championing being African for so long, but I think now it's going through the generations. Everyone's embracing going back home. It's not a trip that we're dreading. Yeah. It's the trip. Even yeah. people that aren't from Africa are like, oh, hey, you're going Ghana. Yeah. Like, I heard he's lit there and yeah. all of these different things. So it's now the time, it's become the time to embrace our king and queen selves and the royalty that comes from Africa, yeah, really. Definitely. Especially if you're born here, you don't really know about what's back home. Mm. And you only find out when you're back home, when you're actually there. Mm. But if you embrace it and you talk about it with your parents, mm -hmm. with your friends, with other family members who have been there as well, I think it's just an amazing experience. And you're actually ready to see what's there for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I feel like Black is the King is kind of a response. Um, I mean, it should have been uh, what we we, we felt from the beginning, 100%. but I think it's a response to everything that we're seeing going around, especially with things like the Black Lives Matter movement, and just seeing so much unrest and lots of conversations starting to happen again about racism and how black people are treated in the diaspora. Mm -hmm. I feel like Black is King is a response for us to like encourage ourselves. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? Because I feel like, especially during the heat of the Black Lives Matter going on, it became kind of depressing. Like mm. it became like. I don't know, you just felt really down. Mm -hmm. So I think that Black is King is kind of like, pick up yourself. Yeah, yeah. and I think we're kind of taking it back into our own hands because yeah. I think the perception of Africa, where we haven't been at the forefront of what we are able to show of our own continent, mm -hmm. other people who don't have a actual real perspective of it have been dominating what the rest of the world sees yeah. it to be. Yeah. But now Black is King, if you look at the credits for the whole of the Beyonce film, yeah. it's everyone with our yeah, surname, yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. And we've now portrayed Africa in the best light, the true light yeah. as well. Yeah. So it's a time that we've taken it into our own hands and be like, actually, this is how you all should have been seeing yeah. Africa <laughs> so long ago. Yeah. Do you guys feel like Africa is a viable option? I mean, now the conversation has started, and I think there's a lovely conversation about blackness mm -hmm. and about accepting and embracing our blackness, but do you still feel like Africa is an option in terms of working there, in terms of being living there, um, settling there? All this I definitely agree that it is somewhere that you can actually move there permanently because we have technology now, we have the internet, you can work online, mm -hmm. you can actually build your own business and mm -hmm. grow, you can also give back to your community and see what you can give um, to wherever place that you would like to go to in Africa. So I think it's just a perfect time and uh -huh. a perfect place. And they will welcome you with open arms as well. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So I definitely agree. It's a place that you can actually go to and you'll be absolutely fine. And I think you even love it. That's, that's <laughs> sun. Who yeah. says nose to sun? Fact, man. Fact. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree too. I think it's become a place where people are seeing there's seeds that can be sown. And I think now is literally the time to allow them to flourish. And I think people have big ideas and they're kind of realizing that the ideas that they have here aren't as cherished and as, you know, like fertilized as they can be if they bring it home. Mm -hmm. And I think that people are realizing actually, instead of just pitching my idea to somebody else to take over, why don't I just use my own idea in my own home soil and watch it grow from there? So I think people yeah. should move, yeah, why yeah. not? <laughs> I think it's something that people have to really think carefully about. I think when you're from the diaspora, like, our experience, our lived experience is very, very different mm -hmm. from the African experience. That's I think true. sometimes we do look at Africa with rose tinted glasses because mm -hmm. we desire home. And I think that's what it is like when you don't feel at home here. So I think it's like, I definitely like love the idea of settling in Africa, but I think it's at the same time, you have to be very realistic in how you mm -hmm. approach it. It's like, it's not, we're not gonna all be kings and queens yeah. in Africa. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just it's just not the reality. And I think understanding the experience of those that are already live in there. So, if I use the word gentrification, if you yeah. understand what I'm saying, mm -hmm. like the idea of, because we're here and it's like, oh, let's go yeah. there and build mm -hmm. yeah. and driving, like there's businesses that are already there. How can we support yeah. the business that are already there? How can we collaborate? How yeah. can we um, 
just nourish what's already there as opposed to thinking we know what's best for there and let's bring in all our brilliant western ideas and build something do you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. how can it become a collaboration where we kind of build together Mm. do you see i mean i think that's just certain things that i think come to my mind when i think yeah i think i think the biggest thing for me is as well as black is king but black is also diverse Mm. um we're kings and queens amazing but we're also we're also human beings Mm -hmm. we can also be upset we can also be sad Mm -hmm. we're also going through very real items and very real I, different things, should I say? Yeah. You know what I mean. And I think the biggest thing for me when I think of black is king, is like if I'm saying just a king as a male is a king will go through ups and downs. Let's make sure we represent all sides of that king because yeah. it's very easy to push a narrative that we are this yeah. leader. I don't think it's a thing where it's like you're just a king and nothing else. Yeah. And mm. like you know, there's this whole thing about why you know black excellence, but what about black normality? <laughs> <Honestly. Yeah. laughs> I think it's like we haven't necessarily, I mean, there's obviously from people's homes, they're encouraged that you can do whatever you Mm -hmm. want. And, you know, I think this is a kind of, your blackness is your essence, is Mm. your royalty. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not necessarily saying like, you're just a king and you have to be a king. And if you're a, I don't know what sort of job that may not be Mm king-like, that means you're not fitting in the black king realm. Mm -hmm. I think it's to say, you know, you haven't usually been told that you're a black king. So now, Let's tell everyone and make sure everyone feels that way. Yeah. yeah. And I guess off your point, by ten, telling someone that, what does it do for them? Exactly. By actually, you know that kind of thing, like those positive affirmations? Oh, yeah. Yeah. By giving them that positive affirmation, it will bring something more out of them. And yeah, it may not be that they're going to be on the front line necessarily, but just whatever they have inside of them, it kind of will maybe encourage them to just shine yeah. in wherever, whatever space they're in sort of thing. So It's definitely space because I feel like... Um, Throughout all those years, we weren't really appreciated of who we were. Our culture mm-hmm. was basically taken away from us. And right now, we, pardon? I still believe we're not te- um, appreciated fully. Yeah, 100%. I feel mm-hmm. like there's, right now, we're at a starting point and there's like a massive long journey, like mm-hmm. a long way to go. Mm-hmm. And already that we're talking about it, it's making a difference. Yeah. But I feel like there is a lot of things that we can do and we can change. and it's. It's just faith, isn't it? Mm. When you do tell someone like your kings, your queens, mm. it does you know, change your mindset of, okay, what can I actually do to embrace that and mm. change and help my other black people and you know, to do what they need to do and mm. help us you yeah. know, and support us? Definitely, definitely. And would you say there's, like, okay, question for you guys. What would you say is the main points that coming out of the light of Black Lives Matter uh, the Black is King movie. What are the stories that you want? What would the stories would you personally tell your nieces, nephews, your little ones about blackness that maybe haven't been said in the media or don't get said at schools or things like that? I think just that they're enough, you know? I think growing up, getting pointed out for having a big nose, having a big lips, like literally having literally like teachers calling you by that, oh, big nose, come here. Like wow. it was a different time. Yeah. It was a different time. Like. 80s 90s early 90s sort of thing and I remember vividly that and then you feel like some type of way about it but you're not respected your voice is not respected Mm. things like we've talked about this before about like not being able to wear natural hairstyles because it's seen as unprofessional it's society consistently telling you that what you have is not enough and you need to be something different and I Mm. think for me instilling in the next generation that just how you are exactly how God has made you you are enough nothing needs to be added or taken away for you to be better Mm -hmm. if you make choices to kind of adjust certain things that should be your own choice not because you feel like you need it to be to be enough do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. I completely agree with you Mm -hmm. I also feel like we shouldn't be afraid to help people and teach people um when in secondary school I went to um, just an all white school and I never had that before people are asking me questions about my hair my nose mm. my skin color they were like really asking questions like they've never seen a black person before and to an extent I was a bit offended but then I'm like okay wait they don't know mm. they actually have no clue mm. so it's basically not my duty but my duty to help them yeah. to answer their questions to okay i don't really like people touching my head but you know you can touch it for once just to <laughs> see so like that you're it's just a normal life to life like day to day thing and like you know black people are normal i think that's one of the things that i want to yeah, yeah, yeah to tell my children that black people are normal mm. yes you have the hair curls out here it doesn't go down here yes you have a big nose yes mm-hmm. 
like we eat different food but it's just normal mm. it's life yeah and a few final thoughts yeah i think i've kind of had a different experience like my school was majority black and asian so i never explicitly had um that sort of attack in a sense mm. of like your hair is this your nose mm. is this so i've never personally experienced that but i think i'm kind of grateful for social media and mm the fact that people can have these conversations and even like a platform mm. like this where you're able to hear other people's experiences. So I think I would want my children or nieces or nephews or future generations to be aware of the history behind um, why this has even come to place and how it is literally just like a fake science that, you know, that according to the structure of your skull, you are deemed to be less um, intelligent and like that is just it has come from nowhere yeah. mm. and nothing of substance so it's mm. like let's learn that unlearn it and then you know just believe in who you are so i'd want them to definitely have an understanding of where this has come from and as i said like use social media to be able to um not be naive to it as well i think like, i haven't been through it but i understand and have heard these stories so mm. i'd want them to have a you know not be naive but also um mm just be strong in who yeah, they are. Yeah, 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 mm. amazing, amazing. We need to take a short break, but when we're back, we'll be talking about Kanye West and black businesses, and we will also be playing our new game, What's Hot. See you after the break. Uh -huh. 